This message was recorded at Vision Baptist Church in Alfred, Georgia. It is our prayer that you will be blessed by the preaching of God's Word. All right, well, as Trent said, or Brother Trent, however we're doing this, I'm going to be talking about Jonathan. So turn with me, if you will, to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18 and uh, verse 1. Before I get into that text, again, as this is a biography, I'm going to be kind of around 1 Samuel chapter 18. So before I read that, I just want to talk about some things that, uh, that happened to Jonathan before this moment. And uh, I've, I've been wanting to do a biography of a character in the Bible. It's only recently I got the opportunity to do it. And as I've been studying through 1 Samuel, reading through 1 Samuel, just going through it, I, Jonathan made a, a big impact on my mind. So I was really happy to get the opportunity to study him. But if we go back a few chapters in chapter uh, 13, we see that Jonathan was able to lead a group of uh, Israeli warriors to defeat a garrison of Philistines. In chapter 13, this happened at Geba. Then in chapter 14, a chapter we probably all know pretty well, he was able to take he and his armor bearer, go up on top of a mountain, and slay about 20 Philistines. So Jonathan, a character we may not know too much about, he's actually kind of awesome. He was able to do some really cool things. And then in chapter 17, we all know this, David kills Goliath. So we have Jonathan here, who has this huge military background. Then we have David, the man who killed Goliath. Now let's read in uh, verse 1 of chapter 18. It says, And it came to pass, we had made an end of speaking unto Saul, this is David here, and the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So this is probably the first time Jonathan and David met. And I want you to notice something here, that this is Jonathan meeting David. This is Jonathan, the man that uh, defeated a garrison of Philistines, the man that slayed about 20 Philistines. And then this is him meeting David, the man who just killed a giant. These are the two greatest warriors in Israel are meeting right here. That's what this occasion is right now. These, these two great warriors are meeting. Now, as we read through Jonathan's life, we notice a few things. We notice, one, that he has this military prowess. Two, he has a love of the people. The people love him. It says in uh, 1 Samuel 14, 45, the people loved him so much that they saved his life on one occasion. But we also know that he's the son of King Saul, which makes Jonathan prince, makes him heir to the throne, which sounds pretty great until we keep reading and we realize even though Jonathan's heir to the throne, it's not his throne. Because we know that David gets anointed to be king. Now this this all seems like it would be bad for Jonathan, right? right? Like, someone's going to take the throne that is rightfully mine. Someone's going to take my throne. But rather than Jonathan doing what he would be able to do, launching a rebellion against David, rather than Jonathan using his military prowess, using the love of his people, using the right to the throne, rather than him using that against David, he uses that to help David. He uses that to help see God's man put on the throne. And that's, that's what we need to be doing. That's, that's something we all can be doing. That's something we need to learn. That Jonathan was in total submission to God's plan. That despite him not getting his rightful throne, Saul tells us in 1 Samuel 20, 31, that the son of Jesse, David, is stealing Jonathan's throne. Saul tells that to Jonathan. Instead of Jonathan fighting David, Jonathan helps David. In 1 Samuel 19, Jonathan tries to convince Saul not to kill David. Again, when that doesn't work, he tells David to run. Then in 1 Samuel 20, he tells him to run again. He is constantly trying to help David get the throne. You know, I was... Uh, I was talking through this, uh, this sermon with someone else, with uh, Robert, and he told me something. 
He said, in our ministries, in our lives, we're not the kings. We're the king makers. That's how we need to approach ministry. It's not about us. If you were here for the teachers and workers meeting, it's not about us. It's about the next guy. It's about the guy after him. It's about the guy after him. Our ministry isn't about building us up. Jonathan saw that. He didn't build his own name. He built the name of David. He, he worked not to see himself on the throne, but to see David on the throne. That's what we need to do. We need to work not to see us in preeminence in ministry, not to see ourselves not to see ourselves as the important ones in ministry, but work to see the next person, to see the next person succeed, to see them build up someone who succeeds. A constant cycle of building someone else up. We don't only see it in Jonathan, we see it in Jesus' life too. Remember he had those 12 guys, 12, that we call apostles? Well, the Bible calls them that too. But we... <clears throat> But we see them, and before Jesus dies, he says, you are going to do greater things than I've done. See, Jesus was focused on a ministry of building other ministers. And that's who we need to be. We need to remember that like Jonathan and like Jesus, we are kingmakers. We're not the kings. This, this isn't about us. This isn't about me. This is about the one I train. This is about the one he trains and he trains. This is a constant cycle of us realizing we're not the kings. We're the king makers. And I think, that's, I think that's a lesson Jonathan teaches us. And I think that's something that can be learned from his life. This message was recorded at Vision Baptist Church in Alfred, Georgia. For more information, log on to www.visionbaptist.com where you can find our service times, location, contact information, and more audio and video recordings.